Welcome GDLers, this is Bruce from Barking Dog BIM and today we'll have a look at how Archicad executes the different scripts in GDL. We'll also get an understanding of the difference between parameters and global versus local variables. This will help us use the right technique in the right place for the right purpose and make our scripting lives easier. First steps, a handy toolbar to have open is your Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. And make sure that your work environment under Model Rebuild Options, you have Interrupt with Error Messages turned on. Open your GDL Reference Guide, which is under Help Documentation GDL Reference Guide. That's for the PDF version. And the online version is found at GDL graphisoft.com and then click on reference guide we'll start our new object it's either under file libraries and objects new object or it's this button on your toolbar we'll restore down using this button here on a mac it's right click on the tab and choose undock we'll leave the subtype as model element and for this demonstration we'll leave the other fields as they currently are We'll just put in some rudimentary script so that we can see what's going on. In the 2D script, we'll add our project2 command, project23272. The project2 command projects your 3D script in the 2D view. And under the 3D, we'll add a block A, B, Z, Z, Y, Z, X statement. I'll also reiterate that the scripts we are generally interested in are the master, 2D, 3D, and parameter scripts. We'll save the object. For this demonstration, I'll save it to the embedded library, but best practice is to save it to an external library. And I'll call it barking.bim3. Save it externally and your work is safe. Save it as embedded and your work is lost if the file crashes. Now we'll place the object. You can see that it's pre-selected, ready to go. We'll place it. And there we go, there's our object. We'll open it in 3D. And for this demonstration, I'll also open a schedule. This schedule lists the length, the width, the height, and gives us a 3D and 2D preview. Now let's talk about the order of script execution. The scripts in an object are executed in a particular order, depending on the circumstances. In the 2D view, which is a plan, a schedule, or a preview, the master script will run, and then the 2D script will run. In a 3D view, which is elevation, section, 3D document, 3D view, preview schedule, anywhere where a 3D object is generated, or in your 2D script if you've used the project2 command, the master script will run, and then the 3D script will run. When you edit a parameter, which is via the object settings dialog, or a value change in the info bar, or a change via a hotspot edit, the master script will run, the parameter script will run, then the master script will run again, and the parameter script will run again. And finally, the local script will run, be it 2D, 3D, or interface. The master and parameter scripts will run twice. Let's have a look at parameters and variables and understand the difference between a global variable and a local variable. Anything listed as a parameter in the parameter section of your dialog of your object is available in all scripts, master, parameter, and any local script, be it 2D, 3D, or interface scripts. But any variable declarations made in other scripts are only available within that script. When we're talking about declaring variables, the parameter script is included in this. Now, let's say we have a parameter called GSContPen, which stands for Graphisoft Contour Pen, and its value is 7. Its value in the master script would be 7. 
In the parameter script, it would be 7. And in any local script, it would be 7. It would be available and its value would match the parameter setting. Now, if I was to add a statement to the master script, and that statement was GS comp pen equals 5, then in the master script, its value would be 5. In the parameter script, it would be 5. And in any local script, it would be 5. However, the catch is that the parameter value is still 7 because we haven't actually changed the parameter. We've only changed its value after the parameter has been listed. However, if that statement, instead of just being GS comp pen equals 5, it was parameters GS comp pen equals 5, then the value in the master script would be 5, the value in the parameter script would be 5, the parameter in any local script would be 5, and also the parameter itself would update to be 5. Now keep in mind that because the statement parameters is a parameter script statement, it will only be properly executed when the object's parameter script is run. It's a little bit to get your head around, but it'll come together. Now a note about the parameter script commands. There are only five of them, values, values2, parameters, lock, and hide parameter. Now these parameter script statements can also be used in the master script, but they'll only be properly executed when the parameter script runs. They can't be used in local scripts, 2D, 3D interface. So let's have a look at this in practice. It's been a bit of theory. Let's see how it looks in ARCHICAD itself. So we have our object here. We can see that it's one meter by one meter by one meter. We've got its 3D view here, and we've got its schedule listing here, listing it out and representing it correctly. Now, if I was to force a size change using a statement in the master script, so let's look at our object, open our master script pop out, and let's go, a equals 3, remembering that length units in GDL are in meters. B equals 0 0.65, so 650 millimeters. And ZZYZX equals 1.5. I'll save that. Have a look in the plan. We can see that my plan view has updated to be 3 meters long by 650 wide. However, the object parameters have not updated. You can see that they're still one meter by one meter by one meter. Look in 3D and we get the same result. The shape has updated, but the parameters have not. Some of the hotspots have updated, but the height has not. And if we look at our schedule, we can see that the shape has updated, but the listings have not. Now, if we go back to the master script and we change these dimensional changes to a parameters statement, parameters A equals 3. Now, I can make that parameters statement affect multiple lines by putting a comma at the end of the line. The indent is just to make it more legible. GDL doesn't care about indents, but humans do. And I'll change some of the dimensions so that we can see the result to... 1.2, Let's save the object and have a look at the result. You can see that the object has changed and it's changed back to its original dimensions of one meter by one meter. One meter by one meter. However, you can see up here that the parameters have changed. 500, 2 meters, 1.2. So there's a, there's a disconnect here. In the 3D view, we get the same result. The object has reverted back to its one meter by one meter, which is its default values, but the parameters have updated to what I coded. And in the schedule, we get a funky result as well. We can see that the parameters are the default. The 3D has changed, the 2D has not. The point of this is to demonstrate when the parameter script runs, and the sort of effect it has on an object. Now to run the parameter script, all I need to do is select the object, open its settings, 
and click OK. And that's it. That's all that's required to run the parameter script. We can also change the object settings and the result will be the same. So I'll click Undo and show you if I change a value up here. Let's just change it to 600. The parameter script has run and set these values to what I hard coded. So we'll undo again and we'll stretch a hotspot. There we go. The parameter script has run and updated it to what I hard coded. Undo again. Have a look in the schedule and we'll just change a value here. And there we go. All of the values have updated and the previews have updated as well, demonstrating that the parameter script has run. This concludes our short talk on understanding the order of GDL script execution and global and local variables. In the next video, we'll script a simple desk to get more familiar with some commonly used GDL techniques. I'll see you there.